Today's races are about more than just delegate totals. Exit polling will give Democrats and Republicans a chance to look under the hood, so to speak, and get real-time data on how the voters see the frontrunners and what they want from them come fall. For example, in 2016, a vast majority of Super Tuesday Republican voters said they were angry with the government. Trump dominated those who wanted a change and rode that wave to victory in November. In 2020, Joe Biden won 10 Super Tuesday states with support from moderates and black voters, key groups that also helped him win the White House later that year. Matthew Dowd and Jennifer Palmieri are back with me. OK, Jennifer, let me start with you. What question or questions do you think will be most important to get the answers to in exit polling tonight for Joe Biden? I was, what I was interested prior to last week with the Supreme Court decision was whether or not you would vote for Donald Trump if he was convicted. Um, that Not that he would ever be convicted um, necessarily, um, but it gives the Biden campaign information about how, you know, that, 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 isn't, that is critical information for the Biden campaign. It's like, all right, Trump may not be convicted, but they know that tells you some critical things about that person, about the unease with January 6th, perhaps unease with classified documents that they can be, and they may not be Republicans, you know, per se. They could just be independents that are voting in the Republican primaries. So I think any information that gets at, you know, the, the Haley voters are the most interesting to me. What's, what's behind their concerns? Is there anything in there that the Biden campaign can mind to think, you know, is anywhere, you know, some percentage, some small percentage, 5%, 10%, whatever, of those people open to voting for Biden. Who did you vote for in the last election is a very key uh, question, too, because that, that, that'll tell you if there's new people turning out or if, you know, it may be that a lot of people that are voting for Haley actually voted for Biden in 2020. They may be disgruntled former Republicans that came over and voted as independents uh, for Biden. But it's, it's, it's her voters I find the most interesting. Let me ask you about the Republican side, if I can, Matthew. And I think both the inclination and the reality uh, for folks around Trump is let's let Trump be Trump. I don't know that exit polling is going to inform what his messaging is on the campaign, but certainly it can help his campaign with ads and things and then down ballots. So what are you going to be looking for? Yeah, every time anybody says like, oh, what should the strategy be? Let Trump be Trump. It's like, so like, do you go to Zeus and say, let Zeus be Zeus? Because that's what he thinks he is. So Donald Trump is never going to be anything but himself, no matter if it hurts him or even when it helps him, it doesn't matter. He's going to be who he is. To me, the, uh, the most interesting thing, which we've seen develop, and I'm going to look at it tonight, is how out of sync, even though they vote for Donald Trump overwhelmingly, how out of sync Republican views in the primary are with who's going to decide the election in the general uh, in the general election. And so when you look at those Republican primary voters, they're all backing Trump. They don't want to fund Ukraine. They don't want the U.S. to be active in the world. And they're opposed to Roe versus Wade and want some national abortion ban in the course of this. All three of those issues, while supported in the Republican primary, are overwhelmingly unpopular in a general election. And you can't find the same thing dynamic among Biden primary voters. In almost all cases, Biden primary voters are right along in sync primarily with where the general election is. And so to me, the most interesting thing is how the Republican Party, and we'll see it tonight, we'll see if we see it tonight, continues to be, even though they are going to vote for Donald Trump and all of that, how, mo how way out of sync they are with the average swing or independent voter a majority in the general election. So how do you use that? And I'm thinking particularly because... Let's uh, not kid ourselves. Not only is the House, control of the House at stake, so is control of the Senate. They're both obviously so incredibly tight right now. How do you message if you're a Republican in a swing state, a swing district? Well, if you're a non-Donald Trump candidate, it's going to be very hard because he uses up all the oxygen in the room. You have to try to, and even though they don't do this, which I cannot never understand, they refuse to separate themselves from Donald Trump. They keep going along, going along, going along, I guess because they're afraid of his primary voters in a primary. But we, what we learned, let's say, for example, in the Michigan vote in 2022, is all three Democrats won overwhelmingly against Trump-backed candidates. All the Trump-backed candidates 
continued to just lay themselves on the line for Donald Trump, and they lost badly. And so if you're a Republican candidate, even though I think most of them don't have the courage to do this, in order to win in a swing state, which is where this will be fought for the House and the Senate and governor's races, is you have to separate yourself from Donald Trump, because among those swing voters, he's toxic.